Welcome to Retro Adventure Wednesday on a Thursday. I wasn't quite filling up to streaming last night, uh, but today I decided I'd make a comeback and on a special night uh, stream Gabriel Knight Sins of the Fathers uh, for you, which for the past 20 years or so I've thought was actually named Gabriel Knight Sins of the Father, singular, and literally moments before this stream began discovered that I had the title wrong all along. Uh, so tonight... Yeah, we're going to jump into Gabriel Knight. I'm looking forward to it. This is a game that I haven't played probably since the mid-1990s. I played it through to the end back then. I'm looking forward to, for a chance to really go back and revisit it. Uh, if for no other reason, as the chat has already mentioned, uh, because Tim Curry is wonderful and Tim Curry's Southern American accent is maybe the greatest thing in existence. So... Any opportunity to showcase that is a good excuse to uh, stream Gabriel Nutt. Also, of course, it's October. Time for spooky games. Gabriel Nutt fits the bill. We've got voodoo. We've got murders. We've got all kinds of spooky things. So without any further stalling, let me jump over to ScumVM. I think I'm going to play the DOS version in ScumVM and go ahead and fire it up. Thanks for joining me tonight. I've got, wow, there are a lot of people here. That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for dropping by. Really classy rendition of the Sierra logo. I always like to compare Sierra logos across games. It hid scum VM is not safe for work. That's uh, that's really great. All right, so we will load up the intro. I think first of all, one thing that's always left out about Gabriel Knight to me is how in a lot of these close-ups, just how old Gabriel Knight looks. Like I don't know if that's what they're going for really here, but I mean, he legitimately looks like a 50-year-old dude, uh, which I'm rapidly approaching that myself, so I can't judge. But I always thought that was a little bit of an interesting artistic choice. So, let's roll the intro. D work. It's really sort of a challenge to keep up with which version of Gabriel Knight does what. This is the DOS version CD ROM, so that's the one I chose. Uh, we'll see what combination of features it gives us. Designed by the great James Jensen. Tim Curry, 
Pythia Muthi. Wonderful name. Great character, too. A <coughs> dreamt of blood upon the shore of eyes that spoke of sin. The lake was smooth and deep and black, as was her scented skin. I actually have to click through this. Yes, I do. There's the Paperboy. Cameoing from the game Paperboy. Mm-hmm. I bet. Just a minute. It lives, I see. Do you want to speak with Lolita? Gabriel waves it off. I'm sorry, but Gabriel is allowed. I mean, he's out. Yeah, if he ever comes back, I'll tell him. You know, you could do better. I know I don't know you, but you could do better. Sure. Bye-bye. Good morning. The phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. Let me know when you want your messages. Yeah. Gee, you're lively. Did you have another nightmare last night? Sort of. Mm-hmm. I told you, it's that voodoo book you're researching. That stuff can seriously screw up your karma. I'm sure that's it. Maybe I should write a horror novel on passive resistance instead. <sighs> so don't sleep. It's your body. Anyway, your handheld tape recorder came today. Really? Great. Right. I can't wait to see what human rights you violate with this one. I can't wait to violate them. <laughs> For example, if you would just let me... And I located some local voodoo references for you. Dixieland Drugstore and the Historical Museum of Voodoo. Both are right here in French Quarter. How would I ever manage without you? You? Give me a break. The devil himself couldn't change you. Well, if the devil had great legs, perhaps. Like yours. And a riveting personality, I'm sure. Well, if you need any more research done, just ask. It's not as though we're swamped with customers. All right, welcome to Gabriel Knight's sexual harassment workshop. He's here to uh, to make it a very uncomfortable bookstore to work in. I love the opening line. Uh, I'm sorry, but Gabriel's a lout. Uh, I mean, he's out. I don't know why, but that maybe more so than uh, maybe anything but the line. What can you tell me about voodoo? Has really stuck with me in this game. We also have this needlessly complicated uh, interface that adds a few extra interaction options that I'm not sure are completely necessary, but they're here. Today's newspaper is on the counter. Okay, let's pick it up. Times Picohune. Dated June 18, 1993. The front page has an article about the voodoo murders. The article says that the victims are all identified as members of the underworld. The general public of New Orleans is in no danger. Police claim the so-called voodoo trappings found at the crime scenes are fake, a scare tactic and that the murders are not associated with any genuine practitioners. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Potential storms ahead. Proceed with caution, and do not get involved with anything new at this time. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> All right. You know, I think that the community is maybe a little torn on this, but I really enjoy the narrator. I think she adds a lot of flavor to the game. And Ben, you mentioned one of the things you like about the game being the sense of place that it has. You know, this sort of using New Orleans as a setting and really making it such a part of the story, I think is huge. The first time I went to New Orleans back in like 
2000 or so. One of the first things I did was go to Jackson Square because I had played Gabriel Knight and had memories of Jackson Square and wanted to see it for myself and was impressed at how well the game Three had recreated Three snakes it. in a skull. Gabriel's father painted it. What a wacky, offbeat kind of guy Daddy was. <laughs> oh no, Thraknor already redeemed classes in session. This is the channel point reward where I talk about if I were going to teach Gabriel Knight in one of my classes, what would I focus on in it? Um, probably, weirdly enough, I teach a class called Politics of the Undead, where I focus uh, quite a bit on zombies and by extension actually talk a little bit about the religion of Haitian voodoo. I think I would probably talk about uh, voodoo as this combination of Western African uh, religion with Catholicism that we see arise in Haiti during its time as a French colony. Talk a little bit about the uh, uh, mystical nature of it, how it goes on to later inspire the sorts of depictions of zombies that we see in film and television, graphic novels, etc. today, and maybe some of the ways that that media has uh, sensationalized the the, uh, the voodoo religion. So that is my uh, my classes in session. And unfortunately, no, Ben, when I was in Jackson Square, I didn't have to go off to mime. Okay, I better talk to Grace. I've got like 900 questions to ask her here, don't I? Got a minute, Grace? What's up? What can you tell me about voodoo? There I it didn't is. know much of anything about it until you started researching it for your book. Now I know that it's active in the city. There's that shop, a museum. It can clearly be dangerous in the wrong hands. You should be careful investigating it. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Just what I read in the paper, same as you. Okay, Grace is not currently a suspect. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Well, I've only been here two months, but I love it. It's so much more alive than any place I've been. It feels like anything's possible here. These portraits are great, aren't they? Very evocative. Tell me about yourself, Grace. Yeah, right, Knight. I mean it. What do you want to know? Oh, wow, here we go. Let's continue to be inappropriate at work. How come we haven't gone out yet? I'm still waiting around for that lobotomy. As soon as I get it, I'll let you know. <laughs> what do you do after work? Well, I either go to my oil painting class or my Tai Chi. You know that. You know, you can go overboard with this improving yourself stuff. You don't want to alienate us mere mortals. I suppose I should just allow my mind and body to atrophy. Works for me. The writing in this game is strong. You can definitely tell that Jane Jensen is a writer. Uh, maybe first and foremost, it really shines through in some of this dialogue. Just tell me anything at all. I just got my master's in history and classics. My folks wanted me to go on right away for my PhD, but Mistake. 18 years of school was enough. I needed a break. Good choice. How old are you? Old enough to know about men like you. How do you like working at St. George's Books? Well, it's not exactly a huge intellectual challenge. Although the math in your record books could confuse Einstein. Still, I love old books, and it's a nice way to pay the bills while I explore the city for a summer. If you ever pay me, that is. Sounds like Gabriel's just a horrible boss in every way. Just tell me anything at all. I came to New Orleans because I'd read so much about it, and I thought, you know, spending a few months here would clear my head. Nothing, I guess. Never mind. Suit yourself. Let's see, is there anything to request? Oh, wait, Do you have see. messages for me? Dana called, and uh, Susie left a message about a lawsuit. Toss them. Okie dokie. There's more when you want them. Do you have more messages for me? Your grandmother called. I keep meaning to get over there. What did she say? Did she sound good? She sounded great, and we had a nice little chat about you. Grace. Don't worry. Price. I didn't go into detail about your cardinal sins. Not that anything about you could surprise her. She adores you anyway. She's my girl. But she said to remind you to stop by and go through your father's things. Hmm. 
Okay. I feel like Tim Curry brings his A game to this, right? I mean, it's pretty good. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? <laughs> this is like when I had a research assistant. I'd be calling to my office. Then just say, yeah, I really can't think of anything for you to do. I'm sorry. I don't know why I brought you here. I can't think of anything. Okay. No, there's not a trace of a British accent here. I don't know why anyone would think that. Wishful thinking. It's certainly light. It's cert Gabriel doesn't need... And I need to get cash out of here. Gabriel oh. opens the cash register to examine the take. Or in the case of St. George books, the missed take. Ooh. Old. Gabriel, that's all the change money I have. Touch it and you could kiss your hand goodbye. Would I do that to you? I trust you can live without this old gift certificate. Knock yourself out. Okay. Tweezers. I'm going to take the tweezers for a bit. Good. You're beginning to look a little scruffy. Just trying to make you feel at home. <laughs> I like how he announces everything he's doing to Grace. Mind if I borrow the magnifying glass? No, Sherlock. Just bring it back when we get the next estate shipment. No problem. Gabriel leaps through a German-English dictionary. Let's see, mid-tag means midday noon. Gabriel... Sh Gabriel's life is a pulp novel. Gabriel's had all those books in the bathroom and doesn't care to read them again. He's had all those books in the bathroom. Gabriel's had all those... The history books on that... The history. They're actual Gabriel books. Gabriel pulls down here, a right? book on snakes. Snakes are legless reptiles. Hmm. Some snakes kill their prey with poison, some by constriction. A snake smells by tasting the air with its forked tongue. The smells are passed back to a sense organ in the mouth. Constrictor snakes, however, sense their prey by vibration. Hmm. Did you know that medieval legends about dragons and giant worms are actually based on snakes? You know, dragons, devils, sea monsters, well, they've always been associated with snakes. Grace, get alive. Come on, Gabe. That's a good point. That folio does look very Gabriel clear. wouldn't dare touch Grace's oil paints. Ooh, I guess we wouldn't dare. Gabriel selects a volume of German poetry that he always found strangely compelling. Drei Drachen. Drei Drachen kriechen in meinen Schlaf. Die Seele wollen sie lebendig zum Fraß. Feurigen Atems, gespeltener Zunge, genießen sie jedes Mal. That's nice. Kind of creepy, though. Who's the author? Heinz Ritter. I'm not sure what it says, but I get the feeling the guy was one sick puppy. All right, so we know about Heinz Ritter, and we know that snakes are legless reptiles. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? Could you do... Sure. Oh, I thought I maybe can't. we could get okay. Heinz Ritter there. Okay. That all we need from here for now. Think maybe? The $20 gift certificate for St. George's looks pitifully new. And Okay, oh, drink coffee. Important. Mmm, good coffee. All right. Let's... Gabriel cannot see any way to pick that up. See, this is awful. Like, using the hand icon on the door. It's like, nope, you have a door icon for that. 
I'm going out. See ya. See ya. Don't want to be ya. There we go, Grandmother Knight's house. Look at this. Look at these graphics. Gabriel with his 501 blue jeans. Gabriel, I'm so glad you stopped by. Sorry it's been a while, Grandma. Not at all. Give us a kiss. Now come and sit down. Tell me how you're doing. Guess we need to talk. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? What an odd question, Gabriel. Of course, you always were interested in monster movies and all that other weird stuff. You get that from your father and granddad. I don't know anything about it, dear. Of course, it was very big in New Orleans at one time, but... You don't hear about it so much these days. Too much else in the world to worry about, I guess. This is a fun voice performance, too. By this point, the fact that Sierra was actually hiring real voice actors makes such a difference in the games. The early Sierra CD-ROMs were just brutal in terms of the voice acting. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Oh, Gabriel, nothing. And I don't want to. I sometimes wonder what this world is coming to. Okay. Grandma Knight is not a suspect. She's with Grace. What can you tell me about New Orleans? New Orleans is very southern. Of course, though, not as much as it used to be when I was a girl. It's gotten much more influenced by the East Coast and that California stuff. Still, it hasn't changed as much as other places, I reckon. We've always been happy here. I love New Orleans. I want to go on record saying, I love New Orleans. It's the best. I want a mufaletta right now. I want to be able to eat a mufaletta on screen while I stream this. I'll probably be streaming this for a few weeks. So if anyone has a way to like ship me a mufaletta sandwich, I would really appreciate it. And I will eat it on screen and dedicate it to you. Tell me about yourself. Me? Oh, surely you have something more interesting to talk about. Oh, come on, Gran. All right, dear. What do you want to hear? <laughs> hey, how's it going, 42PHD? That's... What do you do all day? That's what I've always wondered about grandmas and older people. What do you do all day? You know how I love to knit and work in my garden? I also take long walks. It's the only way to keep an old body like mine from stiffening up. You're not old. Oh, don't be foolish. I'm older than the hills. Tell me about before you met Granddaddy. Well, you know I was born Rebecca Wright. My daddy owned a lot of land outside of town. We grew peas, corn, cotton, all kinds of things. It was a good childhood, but my father was very strict. He didn't much let me out of his sight. I actually had a mufaletta from the central grocery. Been in line for like an hour to get it. Sat and watched the riverboat go by as I ate it. Oh, good mufaletta. Good memories. Tell me how you met Granddaddy. I met Harrison at a church revival. There was a traveling preacher back then. A big fella named Reverend Jim. I even remember his slogan come to me to find your way. Your granddad was sitting right behind me and my girlfriend Alma, and at one point, old Reverend Jim was flinging his hair around with his fire and brimstone annex, and a piece of it, one of those small add-on dues for man, went flying off. I swear, Harrison and I were the only ones that noticed. We both started laughing to beat the band. Everyone looked at us like we were a couple of loonies. It was then I knew that he was for me. I love that the game bothers to have dialogue like this that really isn't necessary for the game, but, you know, just adds so much flavor and so much character to How it. How you feeling these days? Fit as a fiddle, and don't you worry your head about it. 
Just tell me anything at all. I had your father when I was 22. The doctors told me I couldn't have any more after him, so I'm afraid I spoiled him rotten. Good to know. Oh, nothing. Oh. Let's see, night. Tell me about our family. Who would you like to hear about? Your granddad, your father, or your mother? I think we need to hear about all three. Tell me something about granddad. Your granddad immigrated to America when he was 21. He worked his way through school, met married me, and we had your father, Philip. Tell me about my father. Your father was my only child. How we adored him. Philip suffered from terrible nightmares, just like your granddad did. They were two peas in a pod. Classic Shot and Jaggers, Shot and Jaggers, Shot and Jaggers, Big Jaggers. Tell me about my mother. Your mother was Margaret Templeton when your father met her. She came from a very wealthy Creole family in New Orleans. She was beautiful and reckless. She was madly in love with your father, of course, but I also think she liked defying her family. Since you're so interested in family history these days, why don't you go by St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 and visit the family tomb? It would be a sweet gesture. Maybe I will. You know, you get prettier every time I see you. Oh, you. <laughs> this may be the most realistic conversation with a grandmother ever featured in a video game. I'm going to go up to the attic, Gran. Be careful of the dust. I feel like I've had a very similar, less Nolan's themed version of this exact uh, conversation with my own grandmother. There's a sketchbook on the chair that Gabriel vaguely remembers as his father's. By the way, uh, if you'd like to support the stream, I have a bunch of custom Gabriel Knight stickers ready to be slapped on. Just hover over the video screen for a few bits. You can throw a fun Gabriel Knight themed uh, sticker onto the screen, disrupt the stream entirely, and uh, and support the channel in the process. I think I'll take Daddy's sketchbook with me. You can always put Jim Walls on screen. That's the whole reason we're here, is to honor and celebrate Jim Walls. Gabriel looks fondly at his father's sketch. Images haunt the pages of Philip Knight's sketchbook the way they must have haunted his mind. The images touch a deep card in Gabriel. So familiar are they that he finds it hard to believe they aren't from his own subconscious. Okay. Gabriel doesn't want the clock won't. So I know the solution here is to set it to three o'clock, right? Do yes, uh, Jim Walls is the police quest guy. Um, does anyone know? The hands do not appear to have. How we're supposed to know that? Gabriel doesn't. The hands do not appear to have any mechanical My name's function. Gabriel Knight. Other I'm an American novelist. Hey, it's Gabriel Knight too, Gabriel Knight. An American novelist. Okay, German poetry plus the German dictionary. Ow. Okay, how do I actually move? The this? hands do not appear. I twist this. The first. ring of symbols does not. Oh, that's moved. The face of the face, the face, the face, okay, three o'clock, right? I'm peeking at a walk through here because I will never ever figure this out on my own. One of these is a dragon head. That one? The clock won't open that way. Ooh. 
Let's see here. So. Oh, on the E. Got it. I'm doing this the cheaty way here. Granddaddy, you old fox. <laughs> oh, wow. The Mufaletta is actually a uh, ship. That is pretty wild. Uh, I may have to look into this now. Man, a Mufaletta is good. Okay. What do we end up with here? We got... The old photographs show Gabriel's grandfather with two other men that Gabriel has not identified. <laughs> Thank you for cluing me in on the Mufaletta details. The letter is addressed to Heinz Ritter. Whoever that is. Ketchup guy, eh? Yeah, the interface really is a little bit of a bear. I'm going up the... In this kind of looks like the hat that Laura Bow wears at the beginning of Dagger of Amon Ra. I just felt the need to point that out. It's a lady's hat from the 1920s. From yeah, Grand Virginia Woolf, hat. period. <laughs> now they've added a decade to it. I wonder if that's an intentional, uh, intentional Laura Bow reference. Okay, let's ask her now about Heinz Ritter. That's it. Take a load off, hon. Can we talk, Gran? Of course, my boy. How can I help? We don't have a Heinz Ritter option, do we? Can I maybe show her the letter? Does this mean anything to you, Gran? Uh, no, dear. I'm afraid I don't speak a word of German. I wish I spoke German. Okay. Be on our way. Bye, well, Grandma. Gran, I better get going. All right, dear. Oh, wait. Yeah, maybe the photo. Go back. Word up, Grandma. It's me again. My precious boy. How wonderful of you to stop by. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Make yourself... All right, so let's look at this in the inventory. The letter is written in German, but Gabriel determines what he can about it. It was sent from a place called Schloss Ritter in Rittersburg, West Germany. The letter is addressed to mein Sohn Heinz and signed Wilhelm Ritter. One of the reoccurring words strewn throughout the letter is the word Schattenjäger. The only thing that Gabriel can decipher about the letter is a sense of urgency in the handwriting and in the heavy use of quill tip bold strokes and underlining. That is such a detailed... <laughs> the back of the photo has the following written on it. Schloss Ritter, 1925. Okay, let's see if we can ask her about... Can we talk? Of Heinz now. There we go. Do you know anyone Thank named you for the help. Heinz Ritter? Heinz Ritter? Oh, Gabriel. Where did you hear that name? I found a letter in Granddaddy's clock. I promised I'd never tell you or your father. But I suppose it doesn't matter now. Tell me, Gran. Your granddad's name was Heinz Ritter before he came to America. He changed it to Harrison Knight legally when he arrived. Why did Granddad... I don't know. I tried to ask him about his family, his life before America. 
but he didn't want to talk about it. He never even told me about his name change. I found that one day when I saw his passport in a drawer. Since he obviously found it painful, I never questioned him about it. But I'm sure it wasn't trouble with the law. Your granddad was the best man I ever knew. All right. There we go. That's what we needed. I would agree. Yeah, nobody's phoning in their lines on this. Well, there is effort across the board. I know Tim Curry is off in his approximation of a southern accent, but I love it. I think it's just... the police station. Don't I need to go there? Do I not know about the police station yet? Oh, Mosley has to call the bookstore, so do I need to go back to the bookstore? Sure, I do have Phew, to like, it's humid out there. Go to the cemetery. Made it back, though. Oh, joy. Maybe I need to ask her for more messages. Got a me Do you have messages? Here's a strange one. You got a call from someone named Wolfgang Ritter. He said he was calling from Germany. He told me it was urgent. Maybe you should give him a call. Call Germany? Like hell. If it's really important, <laughs> he'll call back. <laughs> well, fine. <laughs> Let's just hope he's not with the German lottery for pitiful American authors. Do you have more messages for me? Your friend Detective Mosley called. Talking of visiting. Especially with you. What do you want? He left an interesting message. He told me to tell you that his mother's maiden name is Humphrey. Oh, that's H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y. Fascinating. And that he left some photos for you at the station. At the front desk. It's about time. Gabriel, those photos wouldn't have anything to do with the voodoo murders, would they? Now, why would you say something like that? Because I know you. You're getting privileged information, aren't you? Did you tell him you'd put him in a new voodoo book? A writer has certain obligation to his readers, you know. Gabriel, you know you never put him in your book. Your main character is a female orthodontist. You're going to be reincarnated as a pit bull if you keep screwing with your karma. As long as it's a male pit bull with a really big... That's enough. Thanks. Anyway, that's all the messages. Thank God. Poor Grace. Having to, having to work with this. All right. Making good progress. Let's head down to the police station. Take a look I'm at those photos. Try not to sell out the store while I'm gone. Have fun. Yeah, Gabriel is problematic as a boss. Charming as a grandson. Less so as a boss. Alright, things are getting ready to get police questy. There's Jim Walls when you need him. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? What can you tell me about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What do you know about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. This voice is really familiar. Does anyone happen to know off the top of their head who's doing it? What can you tell me about New Orleans? I'll tell you, I'm glad as hell it's not Mardi Gras. If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in New Orleans would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd oh, rather okay. stick behind go. this desk. Yeah, I love rolling into the police station. It's like, what do you know about food? In this town that we're both in, you tell me about that. Have you ever heard of a shot in Jaeger? Can't say that I have, but it sounds dirty. <laughs> I 
learned this German word earlier today, and I was wondering if you might know it as well. Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the Death Sergeant Freck, why? Freck? That's right. <laughs> you got a problem with that? Not at all. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> you see that front door? Yeah. Well, I watch people come in. See this book? Yeah. Well, I write people's names in it, see? People that bother me. Want me to put your name in this book? Uh, I think not. That's what I thought. So Jim Cummings must also be the voice of Negaduck from Darkwing Duck, right? Because I'm definitely picking up some of that in Lieutenant Frick here. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah. I got something for you, all right. As soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. As soon as you exit the conversation interface, I will hand you a new interview for you, Adam. Here's that envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, I love it. The envelope has Gabriel's name written on it. Misspelled. Well, I know that pain. Gabriel opens the manila envelope and finds two photographs. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken upon his graduation from the police academy. He, he had hair then. <laughs> What a line read. One of the photos from Mosley is an official voodoo murders crime scene shot. A graphic close-up of a victim. Official limited edition voodoo murder crime scene shot. How did my line reading go? Are you talking about my, uh, yeah, seem not Barbie. <laughs> yeah, earlier today, I, I mentioned this on Twitter, I'm pretty sure this is what uh, Thrackmore was mentioning. I actually filmed scenes for an upcoming documentary about video gaming history um, and spent six hours in front of the camera talking about all kinds of topics and nearly, um, nearly died from the self-conscious pressure of being on camera the entire time. And now it's kind of weird that I came home and like, I'll do a couple more hours of filming myself in one day, but uh, it was fun. I had camera crew following me around and a bunch of lights set up in my normal classroom and all kinds of stuff like that. So it was a fun experience and super weird. I have no idea when it will actually air, but it should be coming to cable sometime, I think in the next six months or so. So if you've ever wanted to hear me talk a lot about like bad advertisements for video games from the late 1990s, this will be your chance. No, please. No, no, no. Don't make me a meme. Ever. I, my goal is to never see what I recorded today and never have to hear my voice as part of it. If it's ever put in front of me, um, I could just die. I may not survive the experience. So. Yeah, please, whatever you do, if you make a meme out of me, try your best to keep it secret from me. All right, here we are at Jackson Square. Oh. Hey, it's the mom. They are beautiful backgrounds. Like I said, this... <laughs> this Why game really made me want to visit you? New Orleans. I'll call the police, I will! I 
I like. Hey, stop picking on me! I'll tell my dad. I like how they hint at this puzzle, but you need to get the mom to follow you around. I like his mimicking of Gabriel's walk. This is very Jackson Square, by the way. If you've ever been there, jazz band set up. Pretty common sight. There's the Imam there, but oh, I lost him. Hey. You should probably quit harassing children. Okay, let's see if we can go capture a mom again. Ugh. Come on, you. Anyone seen Jill? Okay, here we go. I think we got it. Hey, cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, mister. You want some of this? Okay, so we're going to use the radio, right? Gabriel picks up the headset and listens. Ambulance 91, have you located the crime scene? They've radioed for you three times. Damn! Did you say it was north of the Lake Retreat Country Club? South. Lakeside Drive, north of Piedmont Pier, south of the Country Club. Man, I don't know if it's the clouds out here today or what. Good thing this guy's already dead. Everyone's having trouble. Must have been hallucinogens in the coffee this morning. It's just so misty out here or something. Uh, hey, I see a squad car. Got it, Molly. Thank God. Have a good one, 9 one Interesting. Stupid ma'am. Hey, you! Get away from that bike! Sorry. I'm sorry, I nearly choked to death on my water. Uh, Thracknor, when you said, uh, thank kill. Um, for some Corner reason that really tickled me. Okay, crime scene. Let's do it. The crime hey, chunky scene code monkey. team is still at the site. Gabriel parks a bit out of the way and walks over to avoid adding to the general confusion. Okay. Mostly. Huh? <sighs> Night, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Mm-hmm. Well, for the book. But don't tell anyone I let you see this, huh? Mark Hamill's performance is great. Hey, we'll go, Webb. Yep, that's a Jess face, all right. It's another one. As you can see, same M.O. and no frickin' clues. We're still waiting on an ID for the body. That's disgusting. Isn't this a rather, uh, public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're frickin' ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports of nothing. Now, who the hell is that? One of the graphic novel cutscenes. <clears throat> Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? The 
Detective Mosley, ma'am, we've got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about, Miss Getty. I see. Thank you, Detective. And good day, gentlemen. Whoa, I'm in love. <laughs> yeah, but that's Molly Getty. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Man, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. It's another clean sweep. Yeah, let's get the meat wagon moving, then. Do you want to leave an officer here, sir? Nah. Just leave the tape up for a few days. Yes, sir. If you'll excuse us, sir, we'll take him away. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck in the water moccasin, though. I'll be back at the station. Stop by if you want to go over the case some more. Thanks. This is a great voice cast. Mark Hamill is pretty great here. There are moments where I pick up little bits of his voice, but it's distinct enough from sort of normal Mark Hamill or Mark Hamill as the Joker or some of his other more familiar roles that it's a fun one to, uh, to watch along with. Yes, the invisible snake skin, the oh, clay that you need oh, to pick up. Oh, the spot. Will these pristine banks ne'er be cleaned again? <laughs> Love it. There seems to be a pattern to the lines in the sand. But if there is a pattern, it's smeared. There's only one small area that's clearly defined. There's si but if there there's si but if there's si but if there The lines in the sand are fairly large. Magnification wouldn't make them any clearer. I was hoping we could do like a CSI enhanced thing there. Come on, narrator. Get me a break. Hmm. Let me try to get this down. Okay. Where is the clay? Gabriel was just thinking that he could really use a lake, but he doesn't want to get his pockets wet. <laughs> the police have already taken some. Gabriel can. That. Da Gabriel. Gabriel. I know there's clay that needs to be picked mm. up. Ooh. Is that clay? Yuck. Hmm. Is that a wad of, uh, of dirt? The marks are part of the grass. See if this is a magnifying glass moment. There are marks in the grass as though some heavy wire object had been set there. Heavy wire object? Wow. Yeah, I have no idea how you're supposed to know to do that. Yeah, that's what's strange for me too. It's like so many of these Sierra, Sierra games where I solved it somehow when I was a teenager and didn't use hint lines and didn't have access to the internet yet. It just makes me, you know, think once again, I must have just played it for 900 hours until eventually I clicked every pixel in my inventory and every icon on every pixel on the screen until, uh, until I reached that point. Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small iridescent scale. I think it's a snake scale, but it beats the hell out of me what kind. The mystery then. I believe that's all we need to do at the crimes, babe.
Crime. Crime scene search. This is already sort of a slowly paced Gabriel game. Gabriel wouldn't get far. Oh. Paul has redeemed, is this the best game ever? Which is one of the things you can spend your channel points on here, where I look at the game I'm currently playing, and I answer whether or not it is the best game ever. Is it the best game ever? I'm going to say no. I do think it's a good game, and honestly, as I'm replaying it, I'm finding a lot more to like about it than I remember when I played it way back in the day. I think I've even said on Twitter a few times I thought maybe Gabriel Knight was a little overrated, and I may be ready to walk back that opinion. Uh, the writing is just so crisp and lively in it. The voice acting's wonderful. It's a beautiful game. The puzzles, like a lot of Sierra games, are sort of hit and miss, but... There's a lot to like about Gabriel Nuts. So while it's not the best game, it is definitely a very good game. So that's my official answer to that. Someday I will stream the best game, and when someone asks that, I will simply be able to say yes. But we have to arrive at the best game first. And who knows when that might happen. Go back and see if we can meet with Mosley. I didn't say it was Monkey Island 1, it could be any game. I don't know why it has to be Monkey Island 1. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? Do you know anything about snakes? What does this look like? A zoo? Never mind, don't answer that. No, I, I don't know nothing about no snakes. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. The best game ever could be literally any game. I'm not willing to reveal what it is yet. But I hate this icon interface. Who knows, this may be the best game ever if it weren't for the icons. Hey, mostly. Night, come on in. The mostly thing isn't as funny as I think Gabriel Knight and maybe Jane Jensen think it is. Can I ask you about some stuff? You're the writer, ask away. What can you tell me about voodoo? There's voodoo that goes on in this city, sure. I looked into it a bit at the beginning of this case. But the voodoo stuff found at the crime scenes is all faked. It doesn't have anything to do with the real stuff. I know, I asked some experts. It's intimidation tactics, that's all. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Lots. Can you be more specific? Whoa. Do you know anything about the killers? At least 20 people attend the killings. We know this from the variety of footprints found at the scenes. Footprints? Aren't those as good as fingerprints? Can be. But we'd have to have a I suspect in custody first. And the suspect would have to match one of the few distinct prints we have. Most of the footprints are smudged, trodden over, unreadable. These guys are so casual in their expertise, it's maddening. Like they know we'll never find them. So casual in their expertise, it's maddening. I love that. How many murders have there been so far? Seven murders have so far been linked to the voodoo murders case. Now, the first murder occurred about eight weeks ago. The M.O. was the same in each murder. Lake Ponchar Train was the seven. What kind of evidence have you found? No fingerprints, a few bare footprints. Found a few fibers, but not many. The weirdest one was leopard fur. Leopard fur? Leopard fur? Describe the crime scenes. 
Well, there's the corpse itself, minus the heart. Around where the body was killed, we find marks and flour and blood. There are traces of wax from candles, red and black. Ordinary wax candles, so the lab reports. Also blood and feathers of chickens. Also goat's blood. And plenty of the victim's own, of course. Hey, three types of blood, got it. What's the coroner say? The victim's heart is always ripped out of the chest and missing. We haven't located a single one of them. Oh, lovely. Any idea what they do with them? Don't even want to know. Also, the coroner says some of the victims had heart attacks before the incision. Literally scared to death. The knife wounds are consistent with a long, narrow, wavy-edged knife. Probably a ritualistic dagger. Mosley knows a lot about what's going on here, huh? Is this the first Sierra game to really get this deep in the conversations? I know some of the Quest for Glory games did something similar. I guess maybe Quest for Glory 3 predated this. Uh, but conversation is just such an essential part of this. I kind of love it since the conversations are actually well written. Any witnesses? Nope. There's never been a single witness. No one's even heard a disturbance. It's damned weird. Like they just don't want people to see, and so nobody sees nothing. Know anything about the victims? The victims are all out of towners. We still don't know why. Oh, nothing. Um, sure. Okay. What can you tell me about New Orleans? You and me grew up together. You tell me. It's a pretty nice place, even seeing the stuff I see. You know, the quarter's getting a bit too wild, though. Getting hard to control. Not quite what it was when you and me used to hang here, but... Hell, I've never known anything else. Have you ever heard of a Shutton Jaeger? No. Ha! Is that anything like a Chuck Jaeger? I don't think there's any relation. West Virginia's own Chuck Jaeger. Tell me about yourself. For the book? Sure, why not? Okay, what do you want to know? Wow, there is a big old dialogue tree here. How'd you like working on the police force? Are you kidding? You know I love being a cop. In New Orleans, it's the best place in the world to be one. What are your plans for the future? Well, you know, I don't like to count my chickens before they're hatched, but I don't see why I can't be the chief of police of New Orleans someday. I already know the mayor, and my record is one of the best in the department. I'm sure it's just a matter of moments, mostly. Yeah, yeah, you'll see. How's your home life? Oh, no. It's... Okay, let's... What's the status on the voodoo murders case? It's going. Can't seem to make any progress, though. Sluggish damn case. It's weird. I got those photographs you left for me. Really? Great. What'd you think? Astonishingly lifelike. Yeah, that's what I thought. You got any more ideas for photos for the book? A cop author photo might be nice. You and me? Together? Why not? Of course, you'll have to try to tone down your masculinity. Well, okay. Now I'll call the police photographer. Masculinity. Franks, come here a minute, would you? And bring your camera. Franks and Frick. Oh, I didn't pick up on that. I like it. What did you need, Detective Mosley? We need a picture, please. And make it a good one, huh, sweetheart? Sure, sweetheart. Say, Chintzy. Was there anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast.
need to grab a foul. Right? There's nothing of. Maybe I did this out Gabriel of order. Cannot... Would you just get in here? Hurry up. Okay. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you got it developed. Uh, the photos, that is. Yeah, sure. This whole game seems like a terrible place for a woman to work. Okay, I wonder if I can do this Can I ask you a beer? Do you know anything about the patterns around the bodies? Yeah, weird, huh? All seven victims had those little marks around. We got all the marks on file, but we haven't figured out what, if anything, they mean. Can I see the other six patterns? Uh, sure. People like that kind of stuff, don't they? Might make the book seem more mysterious. But go talk to Officer Franks. Tell her I said you could see the file. Have you ever called the hair club for men? I'd rather have no hair than your hair, Knight. <laughs> so how'd you ever find anything in this office? It looks like ground zero. Hey, I get my job done. I'm a detective, not Betty Cracker. Okay. I guess we can go out and check out this file. Can I ask you a few questions? I'm sorry, sir. There's not. There's no reason to. The gauge is. The control box is in a locked cage and can't be operated. Just. Just. Officer Fricker. Gabriel should go to the. Excuse. Yes. Oh. Oh wow, so the exclamation point talk button is what I needed. Can you get a file for me? What file would that be? The voodoo murders file? Detective Mosley said I could see it. Really? Well, if he said so. There it is. You can look at it all you want, but don't leave this area with it, okay? And no photocopies either, I'm afraid. Of course. I understand completely. Okay, let's look at this thing. Oh, there are my other panels. The police file contains... Don't leave the room with Okay, you can have your file back. The camera. I'm done. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Sheldon, yeah, I decided I would decide be on camera a little more after spending all day doing an interview, but it went really well. It was six hours in front of the camera, but I don't think I made too much of a fool of myself. Hopefully. Can I ask you, you're the right... I'll know soon enough. I got those photos. So you said. Let's take another cop author shot. Let's though. take another cop author shot. What for? I don't think we got your best side. Really? Okay. I'll have Franks come in again. I will definitely pass along word when it comes out. I'm not sure when it will be out. Um, I think it's going to be a 10 part series and I'm featured in one of the episodes along the way so once it's out there I'll certainly tweet about it and spread the word Franks come back in here with that camera best part of filming for the interviews today now was, what sir 
I got to pretend like I was wants teaching another picture. You don't mind, for the do camera, you? which that was really natural. Of course not. What else could I possibly have to do? Anything else, Knight? Hold on a sec while I go check my hair. Good God, Knight. Make it fast. Good God, Knight. Let me see that file again. Luckily, Negaduck doesn't see us. <laughs> Just want to check this machine here. <laughs> Just visiting your police station today. Thought I would... Just make sure your photocopier is working. Gabriel Knight could not look more suspicious. <laughs> That's great. I love that story. There's no point. I did during the B roll scenes where I was not teaching, write some stuff up on the board about uh, women in game design and managed to write up Roberta Williams and Jane Jensen's names. So we'll see if they end up using that as part of the B roll. But would you just get in here? It was a uh, fun excuse to hurry up, write their you? names up there and hope they can cameo. Okay, as a ready. Thanks, hon. Let me know when you got it developed. Yeah. Okay, I think that is now all we need from here, so take our leave. The suit doesn't open. I was clicking on the door. Well, I'll be seeing you. Ciao, baby. Ciao, baby, seems like the most out of character line imaginable for Mosley. Go to the Dixieland Drugstore. Hi. Uh huh. The proprietor doesn't look especially friendly. His business probably doesn't depend on walk in. It's a mannequin wearing a crocodile mask. I visited a tourist trap on Bourbon Street that was very reminiscent of this Dixieland drugstore. A variety of cloth dolls are arranged above the shelves, each impaled with a single silver pin. <laughs> Boy, she really marinated in that line. A single silver yeah. The glass jars contain a number of things Gabriel can't identify. And wouldn't want to. Mm, now he's talking to his own narrator. Now it's feeling very LucasArts. The signs say, Special Saint Jean Yves, Lanyape. Free bottle of lover come back to me oil or master gambling oil with every purchase over fifty dollars. Lanyap. My French is lousy, but everyone in New Orleans knows what that means. A little something extra. I love this game. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Ask what you want, I'll answer what I want. Can you tell me what you know about voodoo? This is a novelty shop, monsieur. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Cabris Sancour. What did you say? Nothing, nothing. Those killings have <laughs> nothing to do with my shop, monsieur. What did you mean when you said Cabris Sancour? I didn't say that. You did. I heard you say it. 
You heard wrong, monsieur. I said no such thing. What did you ask? You, you heard. Yeah, I feel like sticking around and enjoying the line readings is worth it. Like, I'm pretty prone when I play adventure games to maybe feed through some of those bits. I think this game really rewards you for enjoying the performances. What do you know about the voodoo murders? Monsieur, that has nothing to do with my shop. What can you tell me about New Orleans? I've lived here all my life, me. Do you know anything about snakes? What kind of snakes? Um, the kind they use in voodoo? Pythons and boas. So I've heard. Really? Do you have one? Are you crazy? What would I want with a python? What's the significance of St. John's Eve? It's the biggest night of the year, voodoo. What goes on exactly? Uh, I couldn't say. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? Man, I don't even know what language that is. <laughs> Another great performance, right? Tell me about yourself. My name's Willie Walker. I own the place. Look at the voodoo paraphernalia around the body in the photograph. Are you sure you can't tell me anything about it? No, I don't know anything about it. Nothing. Oh, we redeemed story time with Jess. Thank you. Uh, I can tell the story of my first experience with Gabriel Knight. I bought this game pretty much as soon as it came out. I was really excited about it after seeing all the hype in the Interaction Magazine, Sierra's in-house promotional magazine, and was really excited to play it. And I got the original floppy version in the weird box that was all like funky shaped. And when I got it home and got ready to play it, it would crash at the day one scene every time I loaded it up and every time I attempted to play it. I mean, like literally when it writes day one in blood across the, uh, across the screen, the game would just completely crash. And I never got past the intro, basically. I never actually got to play the game when I had the floppy version. It wasn't until a few years later when I picked up the CD-ROM version that I was actually able to move forward and play the game. I think that was a known bug, and I think Sierra patched it for the floppy version, but at the time, I didn't really have a way to call into the you know, Sierra BBS and download the patch or anything else, so I kind of got super excited about this game, uh, loaded it up, and immediately just slammed into a brick wall. Never got to play even the first scene of it. So, uh, I, sw I was mad at Gabriel Knight 1 for uh, for the better part of a couple of years. I felt like I'd really been cheated out of an opportunity to play the game, but I eventually came back to it with the CD-ROM version. Do you recognize this pattern? Don't look familiar at all, sir. Yeah, I think that's all we need from Willie right now. That box was wonderful, wasn't it? The idea that there was this sort of strategy at the time of releasing weird shaped boxes to stand out on store shelves, I think was an interesting little trend, but ultimately, as I understand it, the store started to say, it's like, hey, because we can't just slide those Gabriel Knight boxes into the shelves like we would a normal game, we can't stock nearly as many of them, and gaming companies like Sierra started edging away from it, right? I think that it was, uh, did The Incredible Machine also have a funky box like that? There were a few other games, I think, that hopped on that trend before it eventually became less popular. Lucy, a uh hall. -huh. Oh, joy.
<laughs> that was Tim Curry doing a Cuban accent while playing a Southern New Orleans character at the same time. So that was a Cuban accent filtered through. Hey kids, Bruno, how nice. A few Gee, extra layers. A customer of yours, hardly. How's the flower business? Well, better than the used book business, I see. Rare books. That explains why I so rarely see anyone in here. Are you going to sell me that wonderful painting of yours today? Yeah, it's leaning on some uh, pretty broad stereotypes here, I would agree. And I'd forgotten about the Wing Commander that came in the film 10. That's fabulous. Uh, yeah, that one's great. What was the Infocom game that came in something that looked like basically a smoke detector that you would have in your house? Was it Starcross? Was that an Infocom game? Or am I just completely making that up in my head? Yep, it was Starcross. Good. Gee, is today the day that hell freezes over? <laughs> One needn't be rude. Got a minute, Greg? Okay, we got some new stuff to talk about. Do you about. know anything about snakes? Doing a family tree, Gabriel? Very funny. I mean, real snakes. You know, scaly, cold-blooded. I would have thought you'd find them empathetic. Mm-hmm. I know very little about reptiles of any kind and prefer to keep it that way. I think there's a book on snakes around here somewhere, though. Okay, thanks. Already read that book, Grace. Already know all about these legless reptiles. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? St. John's Eve? Eh, never heard of it. It must be a local custom. New Orleans love any excuse to celebrate. Do you know what Cabri Saint Gaul means? Hmm. No. Sounds French, though. I really dig uh, Tim Curry's French and German accents. Have you ever heard of a Schattenjäger? No. Is that a voodoo word? I don't think so. It's German. Hmm. No, but it has a nice ring, doesn't it? Schattenjäger. Tell me about it. What else do you want? Yeah. Nothing. Sit yourself. Don't need to do that one. Do you have messages for me? Nope. None right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure. What? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm. The name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you could get an address... Mm-hmm. They're murders. Right. I'll see what I can find out. Anything else? I can't think of anything. Okay. Well... <sighs> Yay, end of it's day one. It's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And uh, try not to dream, okay? Yes, the bot reminds us that it's a great time to slap a sticker onto the screen. All kinds of fun custom Gabriel Knight stickers and a Tim Curry sticker just ready to be slapped on to disrupt the flow of the game and support the channel at the same time. This is a very long jacket focused sort of game. I would agree. Yes, don't forget to save. I have been kind of cavalier with my saves up to this point, huh?
the mask I wore as I approached. I was what I am not. Though the pattern wasn't clear, its meaning could be bought. What time does this bookstore open? Good morning. Don't you look swell today? Actually, swollen. <sighs> so have some. There's a fresh pot on the table. I like that she can interpret his grunts and groans. Seriously, you look like hell. Your hair is sticking straight up like a... Oh, it always does that. Never mind. Ha <laughs> ha. Did you dream about the fire and the hang guy and that lion thing last night? Leopard, not lion. Did you get anything on Malia Getty? Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. The Gettys own three local hospitals, just to name a few of their assets. They run in very high circles. Did you get an address? I got the address. I suppose this has nothing to do with the fact that Malia Getty is incredibly gorgeous. I should have known you wouldn't go for a rich, ugly socialite. And that address is... Hey! Far be it from me to postpone your total humiliation. It's 557 West Ingram. That's a garden district, a state city. Very That's fancy all address. I wanted to know. And yes, my dear, Malia Getty is the most dangerous looking diversion I've ever seen. Ouch! Oi, men. Well, at least Gabriel has been distracted by Malia Getty long enough to stop sexually harassing Grace. So that's a step in the right direction. It's Tim Curry, everyone. Oh, Tim Curry. Oh yeah, save. That's the thing I should do. Start. Oh my god. Starting. Day two. I have a feeling this game is going to occupy me at least for most of October, but not so bad, right? I really enjoy this one. Heinz Peter Hume, dated June 19, 1993. A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crimes is fake. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square, called La Plaza d'Arma, under French rule. It was used for executions, firing squads, hanging, even impalement and breaking on the wheel. Yikes! Of course, these days it's mostly a hangout for tourists, street musicians, and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instincts. I feel a dark star rising, all right. <laughs> That growl. Garoo! <laughs> what do you think that line was supposed to be? I guess it's supposed to be like, kind of sound, but he, he took it in his own way. <laughs> good, good for Tim Curry. Well done, well done. Okay. See you later. Uh huh. Yes, who have known that a British man would be born to play the role of a New Orleans novelist, but it's undeniable he's the best. The best in the biz. I believe this is where we can steal Mosley's badge, it looks like. I like that the game is at least kind enough to let us see that maintenance guy there. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? <laughs> yeah, you have to wonder how much of this was nobody wanting to tell Tim Curry. It's like, 
Yeah, that's not what we were looking for with that line. Could you just give it back to us? Maybe like a person would say it? I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's in his office. Go on back. Uncomfortable 90 degrees. Mostly, my man. Night, come on in. Whew. It's hot in here. Dang, the air conditioning must be on the blink. Are you hot? Man, I'm hot. Yes. Fall into my Can trap, I ask you about Mosley. some stuff? You're the writer. How about getting me some coffee? Coffee? You want coffee? Should that surprise you? Nah, you've always been a caffeine addict. It's just that what we got here hardly qualifies. So, I'm desperate. It's your stomach. I'll get you some when we're done talking. That long? <laughs> All right, I'll go now. Do most thermostats even go up to 90 degrees? I've never really tried to max mine out. Don't touch anything while I'm gone. I will certainly touch them. I think I'll just borrow this badge. Hey, what are you doing with my coat? Nothing. I thought I saw something crawling on it. Poor <laughs> dumb Mosley. Just drink this. Thanks. Tons. I mean it. There's a Mosley sticker available too. Just say it. Yeah, now that Gabriel has a badge, people have no choice but to tell him what they know about voodoo. Under penalty of the law. Need to go Jackson Square there, but close enough. Could I ask you some? I'd rather. Okay. Nice drawing of the cathedral. Thanks. It's really precise. Well, I'm an architectural student, actually. It's good practice. Hey, come back here. Hey! The artist would not appreciate Gabriel messing with his stuff while he's gone. That's what Gabriel does. He messes with people's stuff. Again, this feels very Jackson Square. Someone with a hat on the ground tap dancing. Oh, the weight here is just really a lot. That's true. Gabriel clearly respects art. There's something to be said for that. He doesn't respect women. That much is clear. But he does respect art. Why is it still... Oh, wait, here we go.
Interrogating the little boy. You dance pretty well for a kid. Give me some money, then. I don't have any. Well, don't block the view, mister. Do you do requests? Got any money? No. Some to eat? Uh, no. There you have it. No. I don't know how many people here also watch Adventure Tuesday on uh, P.S. Garrick's channel, but this absolutely sounds like a voice that Sarah, one of his co-hosts, would do. Do you do requests? Got any money? No. Some to eat? Uh, no. There you have it. No. Adventure Tuesday is great. I was lucky enough to guest host on it while they were playing Codename Ice Man for what felt like 14 or 15 weeks straight. And uh, it's such a fun dream to be part of. They just finished up with EcoQuest, EcoQuest. I have Eco this Quest, gift certificate. I'm busy. It's good for 20 bucks at St. George's Books, finest bookstore in New Orleans. Really? I'll have to check it out sometime. You could take this gift certificate with you, if you'll give me a lucky dog. A lucky dog for a $20 gift certificate? Well, sure. Here you go. A lucky dog for a $20 gift certificate? Here you go. Yeah, be here. You wouldn't like a lucky dog by any chance. Would I? <laughs> Thanks, mister. If you got any special requests, let me know. <laughs> Hot dog. You mentioned something about special requests? Yeah. You got one? What that to do here? How about when the Saints go marching in? Sure. Hey guys, Saints! You got it, kid. Ah, uh, statue. There we go. This is just the same half routine. We'll see this kid actually mix it up a little. That was great. Bang. Nope. That was great. Can you fit through the bars around the statue? Can I? Just watch me. Good. Can I? There's something in there I can't quite reach. Come on. Can you reach that piece of paper? Sure thing. Here you go. Yep. See ya. The joke of all these different bands playing when the Saints go marching in is really good. Again, sort of perfect for the setting. I'm not sure if there's a Sierra game that uses its setting nearly as well as Gabriel Knight 1 does. I can't think of another one. I don't know. I guess that the land of Shapir in Quest for Glory 2 is also really nicely realized. Another one that leaps out to me. This belongs to you, doesn't it? My drawing. How'd you get it? Oh, it was a bit of a squeeze, but I hate to see you lose your work. I lost my only copy of a manuscript once. Well, you saved my butt. Let me know if I can ever do the same for you, huh? Oh, that's right. Gold Rush does have Brooklyn Heights. It's been so long since I've played Gold Rush. I need to add that to the list. Say, do you think there's anything you can do with these patterns? What do you need? Is there any way you can reconstruct the whole pattern from these partials? Hmm. 
pattern is probably circular, and there's some repetition in the elements. What is this from, anyway? You'd never believe me. Okie dokie. Well, there's... Hmm. I think there's an area missing. If you could get me any more of these, I'll see what I can do. What would he... What? What would... I have another one of those patterns. Really? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. I think there's enough overlap now. I'll give it my best shot. I'll show you what I come up with tomorrow. Great. I appreciate it. Okay. So I believe now we are probably ready to go to the Getty Estate. Oops. I do have the badge. I think I have the badge. Mosley didn't take it from me when he caught me, did he? I don't think so. Go to the Garden District. Check for the badge now. Yes. Gabriel is carrying Mosley's badge. The knocker is firm. Ah, you know what I want to do. Don't make me choose operate. May I help you? Is this also Tim Curry? Because that sounded a lot like Tim Curry. I'm getting some, uh, some serious butler from Clue vibes here. I'd like to see Malia Getty, please. I'm sorry, but unless you have an appointment or official business, I cannot announce you. Yeah, 9,000%. That's also Tim Curry. I do have official business. Really? Please tell me the nature of your business. My name is Detective Mosley. I'm here on police business. I've adopted really? an accent That's interesting. Of Wait here. I'll inform Miss Giddy. Miss Giddy. Miss Giddy will see you. Right this way. Miss Giddy will be down shortly. Thank you. Tim Curry is a treasure. What can I do for you, Detective? Mind if I ask you a few questions, Miss Giddy? I assume that's what you're here for, Detective. <laughs> the fire on a hot New Orleans day. I like that. That's <laughs> really good. What can you tell me about voodoo? Voodoo? Why would you want to know about that, Detective? It's rather silly, isn't it? There's nothing silly about the voodoo murders. But that voodoo is faked. That's what I've read in the papers. That's what the papers say, all right. But you're not convinced? No, frankly, I'm not. The police department isn't known for its imagination. Oh. Well, I can see that your imagination is considerable. What do you know about the voodoo murders? The murders? Only what I read in the papers. And what do you read in the papers? I'm sure you know much more about it than I, Detective. Tell me about your life in New Orleans. The Getty family came to New Orleans in 1800. We worked very hard to get where we are. On the other hand, we've done a lot for this community. I can believe that. You're doing a lot for me right now. <laughs> Averill just can't help it, can he? I mean, there's a whole flirt with her option down there, but he went ahead and threw some creepiness into the New Orleans option. Do you know anything about snakes? 
I'm afraid I quite abhor them. What can you tell me about St. John's Eve? I believe it's some sort of local holiday, but I don't know much about it. Do you have any idea what Cabri saint Gaul means? No, I don't. What does it mean, Detective? That's confidential information, ma'am. Have you ever heard of a Schottenjäger? No, I'm afraid I can't help you with that, Detective. Tell me about yourself. I suppose I don't really have a choice. What do you want to know, Detective? Oh, wow. What kind of things interest you? I don't have a lot of free time, but I do appreciate the arts. Opera, symphony, ballet, fine art. If you look around, you'll see that we collect African art, for example. Yes, it's very beautiful. It is, Detective. It means a great deal to me. Do you have a career? A career? Being the head of the Getty family is a 24-hour-a-day job. We have many holdings and many responsibilities, financial and otherwise. The management of our business affairs and properties leaves me with time for little else. Poor little rich girl? Believe it or not, Detective, wealth does have its price. Do you have a husband? A boyfriend? I'm very independent, Detective. The women in my family have always preferred it that way. So, you've never been married? No, and I never will be. What about children? Yes, that is likely. Someday. All right. Tell me about your family. The Gettys? We're a very private family. How many people are there in your family? Well, my mother just passed away. I am sorry. So am I. She was a magnificent woman. We were very close. I was an only child. And your father? I never knew him. It's hard to believe that any man would leave a woman like you. Or like your mother must have been. He did not leave, Detective. But that's really none of your concern. I'm sorry. Go on. There are, of course, other Gettys in the city. I have a large, extended family. I see. Gabriel with the inappropriate questions yet again. All right. As you wish. Can you tell me anything about what happened out of the lake? I wish I could, but I've never seen or heard anything unusual at the lake. And I do spend quite a bit of time out there. Did I see this clay I found? I found some clay at the lake. I picked up some clay. Isn't that weird? That's a weird thing to happen at the lake. Excuse me, but your eyes are really distracting. I don't think I've ever seen a color quite like that brownish gold. It's so deep and rich. Man, if I could bottle that, I'd make a fortune. Thank you, Detective. That's an interesting observation, though probably not relevant to your case. A good detective never knows what might be relevant, Miss Getty. Then you must be truly exceptional at your job. I think this has gone on long enough. You're not really a detective, are you? Who, me? Well, I am on this case, Miss Getty. I saw you at the lake yesterday. I thought you must be with the police since you were there, but you don't act like a police officer. Besides, I'm rather certain that the other man said his name was Mosley. All right, you caught me. I'm not with the police. My name is Gabriel Knight. I'm a writer working with Detective Mosley on a book. Well, Mr. Knight, now that we've established who you are, perhaps you can tell me the real reason you're here. Well, I am researching the book. And I thought you might have seen or heard something at the lake. I don't like liars, Mr. Knight. Okay, okay, you're right. I, I really just wanted to see you again. You can be mad at me if you want, but I swear I've never done anything like this before. I don't believe Mr. Knight, that. you've lied about your identity and wasted my time with meaningless questions. If it weren't vaguely flattering, I'd really be angry. You're lucky I don't call the real police. I think you should go, Mr. Knight. Malia, wait. If you just give me a chance. I've wasted enough time. I'll have Robert show you out. 
Robert? Show Mr. Knight out, please. I most certainly will. Thank you very much. I had a lovely time. Ah, shit. <laughs> we get an ah shit from Gabriel Knight. That is probably a good place for me to call it a night here. Let me save. And yeah, I think I'll be back next week, probably on Wednesday night for a proper Retro Adventure Wednesday instead of a Retro Adventure Wednesday pushed back to Retro Adventure Thursday and continue playing through this. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I definitely want to see it through to the end. And I just wanted to thank everybody for joining in. This is a lively stream, lots of comments, lots of uh, lots of fun. I appreciate the interaction. I love sharing these games with other people who love them. So thank you so much for coming by the stream and joining me. Um, as always, you know, I appreciate follows, subs, all that sort of good stuff, but mostly just having somebody to talk old adventure games with is fun enough in and of itself. So thanks everyone. Uh, this was, uh, this was a lot of fun. I'm really, uh, I'm having more fun with this game than I expected. So maybe I finally grew into it, but I will be back next week. We'll play some more until then. I'm sure I'll pop over the next few days with a few streams of some random other stuff. So stay tuned. Oh, hey, thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, in the meantime, have a great evening and I will see you again soon.